Tanzania is one of the 15 focus countries that the NABC focuses on in Africa. And what makes this session special is that the country, Tanzania, was recently upgraded from least developed country to a middle income country by the World Bank. Uh, this is seen as an important milestone. It is an important milestone, so congratulations to Tanzania. Um, Tanzania is currently hosting an impact cluster uh, on the poultry sector in Tanzania called Kukua na Kuku, which directly translates to growth with chickens, um, of which I am the marketing and communications manager for. Uh, NABC recognizes that there are more important opportunities um, for Dutch investments in Tanzania and therefore this webinar. I warmly welcome you all. As you continue to log in, we need to begin though. So we are joined by two very high ranking officials this morning. We have the Ambassador of the United Republic of Tanzania to the Netherlands, Her Excellency Irene Mkwala Kasianju, as well as the Ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Tanzania, His Excellency Jeroen Versour. I'm so sorry, I keep getting it wrong. My pronunciation will get better, sir. Later on, we'll hear from the Tanzania Investment Center and of course from two successful entrepreneurs who are in Tanzania, operating in Tanzania. Uh, without further ado, we, we begin. I would like to start by inviting Her Excellency Mrs. Irene Kasianju, the Ambassador of the Republic of Tanzania to the Netherlands, to give us some insights from the Embassy's perspective about the current situation in Tanzania. Thank you very much. Um, Excellency Ambassador Yeron, uh, my fellow panelists, dear participants, organizers of this webinar, good morning to you all from, from The Hague. Um, as I have already been introduced, my name is Irene Kasianju, Tanzanian ambassador to the Kingdom of the Netherlands. I'm very grateful to be part of this webinar, which will speak about or will discuss about doing business in Tanzania. The amount of time allocated to me allows me to make a very brief presentation and I will, uh, my presentation will concentrate on just a general overview of what attracts doing business in Tanzania. And later on, we shall dwell on the description that has been provided uh, for us. Tanzania has a population of close to 57 million. Tanzania's geographical location is very is a very strategic one, as it allows the country to have a direct access to the outside world, for example, the Asian market, and serves as a gateway to several neighboring landlocked countries. Tanzania is also a member of two sub-regional bodies, East African Community and uh, Southern Africa Development community cooperation, which offers a substantial market of over 600 million people. Recognizing this endowment um, and our, under our, the embassy's facilitation, we facilitated, facilitated this. Tanzania Investment Center, which is our investment watchdog in Tanzania signed a memorandum of understanding with the Netherlands Africa Business Council in November last year. This MOU opened doors for more trade and investment and encouraged establishment of partnerships. I want to let you all know and be aware of the existence of this very significant arrangement which must be implemented for our mutual benefit. Africa's strategy for Dutch industry that was launched last month in The Hague also provides for additional opportunities. Tanzania welcomes the strategy and we are grateful to be part among the focus countries under the strategy and we would like the strategy to focus on strengthening, especially 
our private sector. Tanzania offers large population of young people, the workforce. It also offers over 40 million acres of arable land that needs to be farmed. Only 33% of this um, amount of land is farmed. Tanzania has also abundant of natural resources which needs to be exploited. Tanzania is therefore the right place I, 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 I was going very fast anyway. Um, yeah, I, I'm on my, sorry about this. I, I'm on my uh, fourth slide. I was talking about the, 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 the African strategy um, for Dutch industry that has been launched just last month here in The Hague and what uh, Tanzania would want the strategy to focus on. As I said, Tanzania has um, over 40 million acres of arable land that needs to be farmed. It also has abundance of natural resources which needed to be exploited as well. So having mentioned all these factors, Tanzania is the right place to do business. Now, uh, let me also speak a little bit about um, COVID-19 pandemic and how it has affected our country, Tanzania. This pandemic affects everyone, wherever they are. Every country, economically and socially. Recognizing the negative effects of the pandemic, Tanzania took rigorous measures to suppress the spread and by encouraging everyone without exception and I'm underlying that without ex exception, and this includes businesses that are operating in Tanzania locally or the foreign businesses to observe these measures that has, have been put in place by the government. These measures are very common to all countries worldwide washing hands, wearing masks. For, for us Tanzanians, we are Africans, we also do the so-called steaming, steaming inhalation. This is a traditional way of fighting um, a virus, a COVID-19 virus. Uh, we urge, the government urges people to avoid large gatherings to avoid unnecessary travels, as I, you can see on, the, on, the, on my slide there. We took measures to, to, to suspend international travels. Um, schools, colleges were closed. So Tanzania took this issue of co this um, pandemic 19, I mean COVID-19 pandemic very seriously and it put in place these all these rigorous measures and we may wish to note that 90 percent of tanzanian economy is entered is centered on informal sector so there was a need for people to go to continue working uh, we, Tanzania couldn't uh, do lockdowns like, let's say, here in the Netherlands or other parts of the world because of the nature of its economy. So people had to continue going to work because they, have, they had to learn to earn their living. Also, Tanzania put various guidelines for institution, institutions, for government offices and businesses. So 
all these measures have been put in place while keeping in mind that uh, uh, we need to prevent the spread of COVID-19, but mostly to allow businesses to continue operating. So let me end by saying that with all these measures that have been put in place by the government and are being followed very seriously and strictly by the public and whoever lives in Tanzania, I want to assure businesses and everybody that Tanzania is safe. Tanzania is very safe. Um, we see fewer casualties or cases, taking into consideration that the size of our country is big and also we have very large, very big, large population. Let me end up here and uh, looking forward to engage further at a later stage. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. And now uh, we are also joined by Ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to Tanzania. Please, a very warm welcome to His Excellency, Hieron Verhoel. Thank you very much, uh, Ambi. And I must say your pronunciation of my name is improving every time that you try it. So uh, congratulations, well done. Um, good morning, good afternoon, uh, colleagues. Um, and a special uh, word of welcome for my colleague in The Hague, uh, Ambassador Kashanja. It's a pleasure to see you uh, uh, in this webinar and to be here together uh, on this panel. Um, yeah, I also have a few slides to share with you. Um, I'll do the introduction quickly so that we have more time for questions and answers because I think uh, it is best to uh, provide information uh, as it is needed. So if there are any specific questions, I'd be happy to uh, go into that. If you can show the first slide, Guna. Um, this slide indicates where the Netherlands stands as a foreign investor in Tanzania. So we rank fourth behind a number of countries. This is uh, some older data. Maybe the Tanzania Investment Center has some more recent data, but this shows that we're quite a, a, a sizable player in Tanzania and that we have invested quite a lot. The investments are mainly centered on the horticultural sector, on tourism and hospitality, logistics uh, and transport, and finally also on the financial sector. The next slide, please. The business climate of Tanzania, I think you will hear more details from uh, the colleagues here. I just wanted to point out that um, doing business in Tanzania can be a challenge sometimes. Um, it is not easy. And this is also borne out in the ranking of Tanzania as compared to other countries in the region. So if you compare uh, Tanzania to countries in the East African community, Tanzania uh, scores quite low on this doing business uh, indicator. Uh, it is now in 2020 at uh, position 141, whereas for example, Rwanda uh, occupies the position 38. So Tanzania still has a lot to do in order to improve the business climate. Fortunately, the government has recognized this necessity and a blueprint has been uh, developed in order to improve the business climate. Um, but so far, um, the implementation is uh, quite slow uh, as we observe it uh, from this side. And of course, the COVID pandemic uh, uh, recently has not helped in uh, improving or accelerating the implementation of the uh, blueprint. Next slide, please. There are uh, enormous opportunities in Tanzania, as the ambassador from Tanzania to the Netherlands indicated, as Irene indicated. Um, there are huge opportunities in the agricultural sector, for example. 
um, already the Netherlands is quite an active player, especially in areas like the, the north of Tanzania, Mashi, Kilimanjaro, uh, Arusha, where a, a lot of investment in horticulture has been taking place. Um, but there is a scope for uh, enlarged investments. There is a need to bring innovation and technology in order to reduce post-harvest losses and to adapt agriculture to climate change. Tourism is a second sector which is uh, huge. Um, of course, this sector has been hit very, very hard by the COVID epidemic as international travel opportunities uh, have uh, closed down and a number of uh, airlines have closed uh, lines with uh, Tanzania. So slowly, slowly they are opening up again, but still it is quite difficult for tourists to travel to Tanzania. And um, this is a sector which is uh, uh, feeling the impact of the epidemic uh, quite, uh, quite strongly. But uh, as I said, there are a number of Dutch investors already active in the sector, both on Zanzibar and in the north of Tanzania. There are huge opportunities to expand that impact uh, in that sector. Infrastructure is another area where we have been quite active, also with the support of instruments uh, funded by the Netherlands government. A very recent instrument that we will be using is to uh, uh, improve the waste management and waste collection in Dar es Salaam. So that will provide more opportunities to uh, use know-how and expertise from the Netherlands in Tanzania. As I said, the financial sector is also an interesting sector uh, and there are huge opportunities there. Um, but as I said, the business climate is uh, challenging in Tanzania. Uh, a few elements I would like to point out. Um, first of all, there used to be a bilateral investment agreement between Tanzania and the Netherlands. Unfortunately, that uh, investment agreement lapsed. Uh, so we no longer have that protection for bilateral investments of the Netherlands in Tanzania. And unfortunately, uh, we uh, have not been able to renegotiate with Tanzania uh, a new investment agreement. We are still open for that uh, opportunity as the Netherlands. We are ready to start negotiations, but the government of Tanzania will have to uh, be ready for that as well. And so far, that readiness has not been shown. Uh, as I said, COVID-19 has uh, impacted quite heavily. Uh, Tanzania has not experienced a lockdown, as the ambassador said, um, but uh, connections with the outside world were closed for some time. They have reopened uh, gradually, so we are uh, again uh, getting in touch with the world. But on the tourism sector, the impact has been quite heavy. Uh, the regulatory uh, environment uh, has its challenges. Uh, and companies that are working in Tanzania um, give us feedback that mainly the unpredictability and inconsistency of application of the existing regulations is a challenge for them to do business. And uh, finally, um, if you want to do business in Tanzania, please take into account that there is more and more demand for companies to use local content in um, the production that they going to enter into. The last slide provides, I think, some, um, yeah, some uh, links and email addresses. Uh, we do have uh, an economic department at the embassy that is uh, able to help you with your questions. We have an agricultural department that is uh, specifically focusing on promoting trade and investment in agriculture and horticulture. Um, Ambi already mentioned poultry cluster. There is another impact cluster focusing on spices. There is another impact cluster which focuses on uh, developing aquaculture. And we have developed investment guides specifically for those two sectors, poultry and uh, aquaculture. And they will be uploaded on the website that you see here um, under Netherlands Worldwide. And also there are specific messages with regard to agriculture on the uh, Agroberichte Buitenland website that you see here. The um, RVO website, which is mentioned here, 
specifically for the Kickstart voucher, which is a, an instrument that has been introduced uh, in the face of COVID. Um, but the RVO website has more information about instruments that can be used. Um, the information which is here will be shared with all of you after the presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Now I would like to welcome Mr. Jaffet Justin from the Tanzania Agriculture Development Bank. And uh, he will tell us a little bit about how Tanzania is faring on in the financial sector, especially in the wake of uh, COVID-19. And what should we expect or what are we experiencing right now in Tanzania and what the Dutch uh, investors should expect should they come down to invest in Tanzania? Thank you so much, um, uh, Amba. Uh, uh, Your Excellency uh, Ambassadors, uh, Jeron and Irene. Uh, it's quite an honor to be here. Uh, as you've said, um, Tanzania banking sector uh, still offer a huge opportunity. Uh, I, my, I should say that um, the banking sector so far, uh, contribution to GDP is less than uh, 4%. And that uh, send quite a, um, a, a, a message of opportunity that um, even though we've got uh, more than 52 banks, uh, but still there is room uh, for other players to, to come on board and um, take advantage uh, of the opportunity. Uh, in the middle of uh, the COVID um, crisis and uh, challenges which we which are seen in the financial sector, um, and my previous, uh, other previous speakers have mentioned, uh, especially on most of the products which uh, or commodities which were for export and import, uh, should be honest that um, that's a sector which has um, um, been impacted and that um, uh, the same has affected uh, the banking, especially on the ability of borrowers uh, to repay the loans. Uh, so, but I should also uh, mention on the effort which has been done by the government of Tanzania and through the central bank that um, there are a couple of measures which were uh, put forward uh, to support uh, the banking sector, uh, aiming at also release, uh, relieving pressure to the guys who are supposed to repay the loans. So that has uh, quite uh, given the sector uh, and the current situation a uh, lot of liquidity. I uh, should say that uh, at least uh, if there's one area where our banking sector is now faring well is uh, on the liquidity side, where banks, um, um, uh, they, uh, since they were challenging, uh, challenged on uh, financing, so most of the uh, banks have uh, real uh, um, uh, relaxed in lending, but uh, that pushed for more liquidity in the sector. But apart from that, we have noted that um, the central bank also gave us room as banks to do uh, the restructuring of the loan facilities, especially for those business which were uh, all uh, highly impacted. And we have uh, given room to extend the tenure, given room to restructure at least two times. Uh, for us, we believe that um, uh, send a bit of support uh, to, to, uh, to other players uh, uh, who are uh, depending on the banking sector. So on, 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 on COVID-19, but uh, that also uh, as a country, we are still seeing that uh, as we didn't have lockdown, uh, we have continued with um, uh, other activities. Uh, if I speak a bit on agriculture, because that's the area where Tanzania Agricultural Development Bank uh, is, we are a state-owned DFI, and our responsibility is to catalyze the agriculture uh, uh, value chains, catalyze the sector by bringing more liquidity and also uh, support uh, in providing products that will really uh, support all players. Uh, I would say that um, uh, as we continue and as we look for options on investment, uh, for me, Tanzania offer uh, quite a um, huge opportunity in the, in, the, in the agriculture sector. And that does not only end up in commodity, uh, especially on exports, but also that goes to fisheries, that goes to horticulture, that goes all the way to, to livestock and dairy. Um, we see uh, 
huge opportunity in fisheries, especially in deep sea fishing, because uh, uh, so far I would mention that uh, we have only one uh, company which is local owned, uh, which is on the uh, Zanzibar side, which uh, does the deep sea fishing. That's one project which has just been registered. But um, on the other side, on the mainland, we still is an area where I believe deep sea for me is a sleeping giant and offer an opportunity, which is uh, uh, capital intensive, but um, uh, that provide quite a huge room uh, for other players. And I can highlight uh, that uh, the deep sea Tanzania size is almost a quarter of the mainland. That's more than 223,000 kilometers square, which is available for, for fishing. Uh, it's quite a, quite, quite a room for big companies or big players who are interested to go into deep, uh, deep sea fishing. But that doesn't uh, uh, stop uh, other players who will be uh, interested to do uh, on freshwater fishing. We've got uh, water bodies like um, Lake Victoria, where at least 51% of Lake Victoria is on this Tanzanian side. And we've got a couple of um, uh, factories who are involved into processing fish. And uh, in the middle of COVID-19, um, uh, 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 the government in support with the private sector, we were able to open up our, 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 our Manza airport for export of fish to Belgium or fish fillets. And for me, that's uh, quite an opportunity uh, for banks to come in and we are really open uh, for discussion, especially on how we can structure deals, structure transactions for those who are interested into uh, capture fishing, deep sea fishing, and also on, in aquaculture. Uh, so that's, um, those value chains are still open uh, for investment as one part um, of opportunities. Again, I will also mention Tanzania is also huge on, 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 on cotton production. Uh, we believe this value chain can uh, uh, really offer another opportunity for investment. And um, it's also, as we know, it's also labor in intensive, but Tanzania has got enough uh, uh, human capital. We support, um, if we develop them uh, with knowledge, they will be really instrumental in playing uh, 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 into this value chain, especially on the cotton, uh, uh, which is grown by more than 5 million uh, families along the uh, western side of Tanzania or the Lake Victoria side. And you want to be into textile, there's room. You want to be in the value chain, spinning, weaving, knitting, in apparels and garments. We believe all those uh, value chains uh, for grabbing. Uh, apart from that, I can also mention that um, as banks and financial institutions uh, in support of the Tanzania Agricultural Development Bank, now we are able to structure or design or mobilize uh, resources for any possible uh, transaction which will be coming on table. Uh, our bank, um, being state-owned, we are able to do uh, longer-term financing and that specific um, we can go the way to 10 to up to 12 to 15 years uh, on long-term debt, but we also be able to uh, bring on board commercial banks who will be uh, supporting uh, in the deals, in designing, especially uh, on, uh, on working capital. And also uh, we'll be able to bring in um, other uh, players, especially on equity and, uh, and blended financing uh, in terms of grants to be able to support smallholders uh, who will be uh, involved. So I, I, I would mention, or I would say, uh, Tanzania still offer us uh, quite uh, an opportunity uh, for investment. And uh, we've seen that, um, as been mentioned by uh, Ambassador Geron on the business environment. I would uh, strongly recommend that um, if we are to, 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 to come together structure transaction and bring all the variables on table, I believe uh, there will be huge opportunity uh, for uh, whatever investment which is being brought on table uh, to at least being realized and also being supported. As um, uh, has been mentioned by uh, Excellence Ambassador Irene, you also noted that the country for the past five years, uh, there have been a push toward industrialization 
and part of that push was also to establish uh, uh, a development finance uh, bank, which is an agricultural development bank. This was brought in at least to support um, uh, this vision. And the government intention is to move into industrialization, into food processing, into value additions. And we believe um, that um, area will uh, quite pull a lot of uh, youth who are energetic and really looking for uh, employment, especially in uh, investment which will add value uh, in, in, in processing. So that's uh, banking nutshell. Uh, we've got a couple of products in banking. You will be supported in terms of performance guarantees. You will be supported in terms of long-term debt. You will be supported in terms of term deposits. You will also be uh, supported um, in all structured uh, arrangement. We've got the Resolum Stock Exchange. Uh, that will also play a critical role uh, in terms of raising uh, new capital, but also bring the public uh, into uh, involvement in this investment. Uh, so uh, for me, looking at Tanzania five years ago and where we are today, I should say that um, in the banking sector, there is uh, quite um, uh, a, a huge opportunity which can be explored by uh, any possible investor who is interested to come and invest in Tanzania. Thank you very much for that. Thank you so much for your insight. Um, now we move on to a business that is currently operating during the time of COVID-19, um, here to give us an actual informative uh, insight onto how and what it's like operating during these times is Mr. Joseph Renju, Managing Director of Milestone Safaris and Mountaineering, operating here in Tanzania. Karibu sana, Mr. Joseph. Um, thank you very much, um, uh, Amber, and um, it's truly an honor to be here. Thank you very much. Um, your Excellencies, um, and I've appreciated uh, everybody's input so far. It's, uh, it's quite enlightening, I have to say. On our side, tourism, uh, as I think you're all aware, has taken quite a hit in terms of um, uh, people's ability to travel, and that has, as a result, had a, a significant impact on what we can do uh, financially. So. Um, the number of uh, people who are booking uh, trips has uh, dropped to a staggering low. Um, and um, we're all doing, each business is doing what it can in terms of its own marketing uh, to try and um, encourage people to make bookings for later dates. Um, but in terms of uh, the, the financial implications for businesses here in um, uh, in Tanzania, I can speak for the north specifically uh, because I know quite a few um, uh, businesses quite well on this end. Um, and uh, what we seem to be seeing is um, the pandemic seems to have begun at a time where most businesses' cash flows are uh, essentially in a, in, in a, in a slump. And uh, that has meant that most people's collections for the the peak season, which is in the summer, um, have not uh, uh, completed. So you find that many companies have done a lot of expenditure and um, in, in order to facilitate organizing the trip. However, the, the balances, this is for companies that, that, um, that take payments in, in, uh, um, in two lots, um, which is many companies. Uh, so they take a deposit and a balance. Um, you find that um, the ex expensed on behalf of the client uh, quite a lot, and so it leaves them uh, vulnerable to not having enough cash flow to stay open or indeed even pay a, um, a reduced uh, um, um, staff um, uh, enough to keep them going, especially because it's a bit unclear when uh, travel will will come back again. So, um, in terms of uh, the financial side, yes, there's the there's the staffing concerns. Uh, so people have had different options to take. So um, they've um, some people have been taking uh, unpaid leave. Uh, there have been quite a few retrenchments as well, um, and uh, indeed some uh, companies. Um, uh, have been forced uh, into bankruptcy. Um, there has been uh, some assistance, uh, both from 
um, from banks, uh, and I guess by extension also that's from uh, the government because of um, relaxing um, uh, the requirements for, uh, or at least the access that banks have to, to additional funds um, uh, from the reserve, I think. Uh, and so what's happened is it's made it easier for people to restructure any loans that they have out. Um, however, in terms of uh, assistance in, in um, being able to help companies continue to operate, or at the very least continue to, to wait. Uh, um, uh, um, the pandemic eases and travel restrictions are, are loosened. Um, that's uh, quite difficult, but that of course makes sense because uh, with less certainty comes, uh, comes uh, um, a difficulty to access uh, funds. Um, so there have been mixed responses in terms of uh, what's happening with international clients uh, from uh, many um, uh, countries. Uh, clients who have booked already or paid deposits, um, uh, there have been cancellations and there have been requests for refunds. Um, and um, um, the, but I think the, for the majority, the international traveling community seems to be um, willing to, to understand uh, that with COVID, it, um, it does require a certain amount of patience and uh, people are willing to defer their trips. So many, I mean, for instance, with our company, majority of our trips uh, had already been deferred to the end of this year and we are now uh, pushing the majority of them uh, well, and clients are actually asking for this. To they're pushing through till till next year. Um, I think that uh, in terms of our ability to receive clients at the moment, uh, Tanzania has always had incredible product as far as uh, uh, tourism is concerned, with all of the natural attractions that are available here. Um, uh, it's very important for us to, to um, be able to serve the clients because clients will come. I mean, it's, um, th there is a huge draw to, to, the, to safaris and mountain climbing and uh, um, you know, local cultural activities here in, in, in Tanzania. So the number of opportunities uh, as far as tourism is concerned has not changed. What's changed is the the international community's ability to travel safely. So in that respect, um, the important part for, for, uh, for us uh, as, a, as the tourism industry is to be prepared um, uh, to safeguard uh, any clients that come through um, and really take all possible measures. And um, in, in that respect, there have been um, some training sessions led by the ministry uh, where they're training guides uh, and uh, putting protocols in place. The ministry now has a standard operating procedure that uh, for, for, um, uh, for tourism uh, operators um, uh, that's quite in-depth and um, it's, it's, uh, it takes a somewhat holistic approach to, to um, safe uh, safaris and and mountain climbing and so on. Um, and there have also been training sessions held uh, for um, uh, staff here in the north um, by associations, so like the Tanzania Association of Tour Operators, as well as the Kilimanjaro Association of Tour Operators have, uh, have both uh, been putting um, uh, training sessions in place and also discussing various ways to be able to assist um, uh, staff that at the moment are out of work, such as, uh, say, uh, the porters on Mount Kilimanjaro, uh, with um, their uh, livelihood essentially put on hold for the moment. Um, it's been necessary for uh, companies uh, that subscribe to um, uh, you know, to, to decent portrait treatment 
uh, to really consider. It's been important for them to consider um, uh, what happens to all of these um, porters in the, in the meantime. Um, yeah, I feel like uh, um, it's quite it, it's quite important. It, it, I think the pandemic has had an uh, <laughs> sounds odd, but a, a positive uh, result in the sense that a lot of the companies are actually coming together. So it's not just about being competitors now; it's about collectively trying to figure out how to to um, uh, offer safety to the clients that we've been relying on for so many uh, for so many years, um, and um, this is 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 a um, uh, this is something very important because, as we know, all all of these issues cannot be dealt with independently. Um, uh, let's see. Um, so, as far as what businesses are doing at the moment, many of the businesses have opened in this season um, in the hopes of uh, having some tourists come through. There have been some, um, uh, but the numbers are uh, nowhere near what, uh, what anybody was hoping for. Um, and then uh, one thing that many companies are doing is considering local tourism as an alternative to um, to or not, not really as an alternative, but also as an additional um, uh, source of, uh, uh, of income. So the, you find a lot of marketing now that's geared towards Tanzanians as well as the international uh, community. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'd now like to welcome um, uh, Mr. Kieta. Kieta, is that how you pronounce your name? It's, it's, it's a struggle for the Swahili speaker. Um, who He is the general manager of Nutreco Africa Export, and he will tell us a little bit about a Dutch company uh, which is operating in Tanzania. Uh, what should a Dutch company expect uh, upon setting shop in Tanzania? And um, yeah, what are his experiences, basically? Welcome, Mr. Pieter. Good morning, everybody, and thank you uh, for the introduction. And you pronounce it very well, so uh, perfect. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you also for the invitation. And very interesting to being here and to hear more about uh, the discussions on the, the business climate in Tanzania. Um, let me first quickly uh, introduce uh, myself and also Nutreco a, a bit more, and then also it gives a bit of background what we are doing in, uh, in Tanzania, but in all Africa as Nutreco. Um, Nutreco is a a company in uh, animal nutrition and fish nutrition, which is uh, present uh, worldwide. Uh, we have around um, 130 production facilities all around the globe. Um, I'm heading the division in, uh, I'm general manager of Nutraco Africa, so heading the, the, the Africa team. And around five years ago, we uh, made an Africa strategy as Nutraco, and we also decided uh, um, Let's put more focus on Africa and also uh, let's look closer to the market. And our goal was in the end not to continue exporting as we did always in the past, but always to start really locally in Africa, local business, local factories, and to cooperate more in all the countries. So nowadays um, we have around four factories uh, in Africa, one in Egypt, one in Nigeria, one in Zambia, one in South Africa. And also we are opening offices and starting uh, local teams all around Africa. So at the moment, we also have a local team in Tanzania, which we started uh, one year ago. Um, and we are rolling out, let's say, our strategy uh, uh, year by year. Uh, maybe Nutraco is not a name which is very familiar for everybody, because it's also the name of the, the, the total company. But in principle, we have two divisions, one called Trow Nutrition which is our division, let's say, for the poultry, dairy sector, swine business. And we have a, a division called Scratting, that is a division related to our aquaculture uh, activities. And with both divisions, we are active at the moment in Tanzania, um, and also, of course, around whole Africa. At the moment, we operate in around 40 African uh, countries, um, and we are now active in Tanzania for around four years, I would say. 
Um, yeah, so what always been our strategy is to partner up with, uh, with local partners, find uh, good partners in our markets where we can uh, work together with, and from there on build further uh, uh, the industry, spread our know-how, our know-how is mainly on uh, formulation and nutrition, um, and, and, and to uh, build from there in the poultry sector, uh, in the ruminant sector, uh, but also for tilapia and catfish in the aquaculture uh, uh, sector. Um, the, the, the last year, I, I have to say, was a, a very interesting year for, uh, for us because that happened quite a lot also looking to when you uh, looking to Tanzania. I believe um, the, the sector had quite, quite a tough last uh, six months. Uh, I think in quarter four uh, last year, uh, the, the, um, the availability of good quality mice for, for the local business decreased quite a bit, but which uh, through some challenges and later on, COVID came into the country. So that is a, was not an ideal situation, you would say, for the business. But, I, but I, what, we, what we see and what we still see is that, and that is in a lot of African markets, you can have very big challenges or very big hits, but also the resilience of the markets are so strong that also the, it can go very back, uh, go back on track. So if we are looking, for example, now when we are still maybe in the midst of the Corona crisis worldwide, we see that the demand uh, for, for broiler meat, the demand for eggs the, uh, isn't affected that much. Uh, especially uh, in all Africa, we see that the demand for eggs increased uh, as it is a good source uh, for protein and the demand for broiler meat, let's say, got a, uh, got a uh, temporary demand drop, but also there we see again that the, the way uh, up uh, is there. So what we do normally, we, we uh, have uh, normal shipments again going uh, to Tanzania, uh, as, as we did before. And I think the positive note, what we really see in the market at the moment is that the, the bases are very good, which in the bases is in, in the end uh, need for good protein, uh, need for good food. And that is there in Tanzania. And we saw a huge development over the last two years, especially in the, in the poultry sector, uh, where a lot of local feed companies started up, also uh, thanks to the, the, the policy in Tanzania around that. Um, and, and we see they are bouncing back uh, relatively soon already uh, after the crisis. So um, yeah, what I believe personally, if I'm looking to agriculture is that the basics are uh, for the market are there and therefore uh, business continues more or less. Uh, yes, there was a, a small demand drop uh, due to the maize availability in Corona, uh, but that or less more recovered. But next to that there are also huge opportunities for the aquaculture sector. So we are, you know, brand spreading, which is uh, an expert in fish nutrition. We also started up new projects in Tanzania um, to also boost uh, more uh, local fish farming. And not only, let's say, in the lake, but also uh, uh, ras, meaning in uh, uh, land-based farming, which we have seen taking a bit uh, a, a strong jump ahead. Um, so if, if, if you would ask us as a company, so how do you look at the moment at the, the, the Tanzanian sector and uh, how do you see the, the time after COVID or the time in the midst of COVID? Um, we are very positive. So we see business is running again. We see already a big recovery in the market and go, that we are going more and more to normal levels uh, again. Um, because the basics are there, uh, the, which is demand for protein and demand for meat. Uh, so we are looking very positive to Tanzania, but also, also of course, the other African markets. Um, and we see that it is for us as a company also very important to be there locally to serve and support our customers. Because uh, uh, where we can still partner up is really to, to work together on nutrition to work together on what is important to uh, increase productivity on farm, uh, what is necessary to make better feed. And that is where we are going to focus up also the coming years uh, in Tanzania. 
Um, so I think that, that sums up a little bit what we are doing at the moment. Uh, if there are any questions, of course, feel free to, uh, to ask me here in this call or uh, contact me later on. Um, and thank you. Thank you so much for those uh, wonderful insights. And now I would like to welcome the director of Tanzania Investment Center, Karibu um, Sana, Mr. John Nali. What are the current investment opportunities in Tanzania? Uh, uh, what, what, what is happening in the midst of COVID-19? Thank you so much for joining us. Karibu Sana. Okay, thank you. Uh, your Excellencies and uh, other participants, thank you so much for, um, for this opportunity. Uh, of course, let me start explaining what TIC is doing. Uh, Tanzania Investment Center, this is an agency of the government, and we have three main functions. Uh, the first one is to attract investors to come to Tanzania. Um, the other one is to, uh, to facilitate investors uh, who are showing interest to invest in different sectors by assisting them to obtain permits, approvals and licenses. And the third function is to advise the government on matters related on investment uh, climate in Tanzania. So in assisting potential investors to establish various uh, investment projects, uh, the government has stationed uh, senior government officials um, under one roof, uh, whereby potential investors who have indicated interest to invest in any sector they get assistance to obtain whatever license they will need in order to establish their business. So at the One Stop Investment Facilitation Center, we have officials from the uh, Department of Immigration Services. They help investors to obtain uh, residence permits for the shareholders of the companies, as well as for the foreign employees. We have officials from the Commission of Labor. They help investors to obtain work permits. So we have other officials from other government um, institutions uh, like TBS, which stands for Tanzania Bureau of Standards, Tanzania Medical Devices Authority, uh, Tanzania Revenue Authority. So they are all stationed under one roof in order to assist investors who are showing interest to obtain various permits, approvals, and licenses. Now, uh, let me talk about the existing investment opportunities. Uh, basically, the focus, the focus of our government is to promote investment in the manufacturing sector. So manufacturing sector has, give, has been given the highest priority, particularly establishment of manufacturing projects that will utilize locally available raw materials. So this one ranges from agriculture to mining to fishing to livestock. But let me start with, ag in agriculture, uh, we are all aware that we export most of our agricultural products in its raw form. So the emphasis of the government is to make sure that uh, the investors who are, who are showing interest in the agricultural sector, they also focus in, ad, in, in value addition of various agricultural crops. Perfect, thank you so much for that. Uh, great, so for all the people who had, the participants who had questions that go directly to TIC, uh, we will share um, the director's email address and you can get a hold of him and have them answer all your questions for you. Thank you very much for <coughs> giving us again the opportunity to speak. Um, I will start answering this, um, what you have asked by also answering or reacting to what Ambassador Yaron said with regard to protection of um, Dutch investment in Tanzania. I want to assure him that uh, uh, Tanzania Investment Act provides for protection of any private asset against expropriation and nationalization, regardless of the nationality of the owner of the assets in question. So the, uh, despite the fact that we recalled a bilateral investment agreement between Tanzania and the Netherlands, but still Dutch investors in Tanzania are protected. And this protection is under the Tanzania Investment Act. Maybe Mr. Mnali could assist, can assist me uh, more about this. And I also wish to assure you that uh, Excellency, 
and Dutch invest, investors are present in Tanzania that uh, we will definitely come back with bilateral investment agreement between Tanzania and the Netherlands. The willing is still there. The government is still working on this um, a, a type of uh, agreement or treaty so that we can we can come up with a, a common model of BIT or bilateral investment treaties for all countries that we are we are we are doing business together. So it was not only uh, that of the Netherlands that was recalled, but all BITs were recalled for for purposes of undergoing review, um, so as to come up with uh, with a, a more common model of of these agreements. So I, so Dutch investment in Tanzania is protected. I want to assure your Excellency and uh, all the Dutch investors in Tanzania. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you, Ambassador Kashyanji, for that um, uh, elaboration. Uh, indeed, uh, investment protection is there. But one of the essential elements in a bilateral investment treaty is access to international arbitration. And that road is closed now as long as there is no bilateral investment treaty. So I think that is an important element for a lot of investors to decide whether or not to invest if they have that opportunity to go for international arbitration. Um, you asked, well, what should companies keep in mind if they want to invest in Tanzania? Yeah. I think um, these are quite uh, obvious points, but uh, very specific to Tanzania. Um, attention for personal networks, for personal relations, that's extremely important. Uh, you need to uh, know the people personally and you need to invest in developing these relationships in order to build up uh, your network and uh, the potential for your company. So that is a very important element uh, that you need to take in, uh, into account. And secondly, I would say a very essential characteristic is um, tenacity and a long-term uh, perspective. Um, the rewards of investing in Tanzania are potentially high because there is an enormous market, there is an enormous need for a Dutch expertise and know-how, um, but it takes a, a long-term perspective in order to, uh, to actualize these, uh, these potentials. And you also have to be quite tenacious. You have to be like a terrier. You have your eye on the goal and you go for it. But you don't um, let go, uh, not with the first uh, uh, disappointment that you have, not with the second, not with the third, because disappointments will be there on the way, but um, the reward is high. So if you're tenacious, you can achieve the reward and otherwise you will fail. And that would be terrible um, if, if that would happen. But that would be my advice for both African companies trying to link up with Dutch companies and the other way around. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Uh, well, we have come to the end of the webinar. It has been fantastic. It has been extremely insightful. I would like to thank all the speakers, Your Excellency Ambassador um, Irene Kasianju, Your Excellency Ambassador Heron Berhul, um, representatives from the private sector and all the participants for your contribution. And we hope that this section, um, this session was very insightful to you. A recording of the webinar will be made available via all our social media, so feel free to rewatch and get some more um, insights if anything you missed at all. This is the final installment of the webinar series for now. We will resume webinars in the first week of September. Thank you again to all our participants. We really appreciate it. Also, as the communications and marketing manager uh, of NABC in Tanzania, I will be happy to help you with any questions that you may have regarding um, this country and of course supporting you in your business activity here. You may find my contact details at the NABC website. Um, thank you so much for joining again. Have a great afternoon. And of course, if you're going to leave as our colleagues in the Netherlands have, uh, enjoy your summer holidays. Thank you so much. <laughs>